Hello aspirants. So in today's video lecture, we are going to talk about fiscal deficit. So you know that fiscal deficit is part of or is also regarded as twin deficit. So there are two deficit that is a concern for our economy that is fiscal deficit and current account deficit. So in this video, I am going to talk about only fiscal deficit. So if you listen this video, so by the end of this video, you will understand that what steps must be taken to reduce fiscal deficit or you can say what steps already government has taken to reduce fiscal deficit. So this can be your expected question in your both prelims and mains. Now, first of all, understand what is fiscal deficit. So if you see fiscal deficit, so fiscal deficit is government is curing a fiscal deficit when a balance of the government's total non-debt creating receipts and total expenditure turns out to be negative. So if we see in a simple language what exactly it means, so I can say that fiscal deficit is equal to total expenditure. So your total expenditure is, so fiscal deficit is total expenditure minus minus not total receipts so here we'll say that minus revenue receipts plus non debt creating capital receipt so if you have seen my previous video that is component of budget so there you can refer or there you will see that total expenditure is your revenue expenditure revenue expenditure plus capital expenditure whereas your to revenue receipt is tax revenue plus non tax revenue and your non debt creating capital receipt is your disinvestment plus recovery of borrowing or loan by government of india so this is what your fd now can we say in a simple language that fd is nothing but the total borrowing total borrowing needed needed for upcoming financial year So, fiscal deficit is nothing but total borrowing needed for upcoming financial year. So, this is what you have to remember. Now, when you talk about fiscal deficit, so it means that total borrowing needed for upcoming financial year. So, you know that on 1st of February, every year, finance minister present a budget. So, in that budget, they mention about that what will be our estimated expenditure. So, in my last video, I talked about that our estimated expenditure for financial year 23-24 is 45 lakh crores and our estimated receipts that is revenue receipt plus non-debt creating capital receipt is around 27.2 lakh crores. So it means the FD, FD for this year is 17.8 lakh crores. So when I am saying this financial year, I am talking about financial year 23-24 or you can say which starts from 1st April 2023 to 31st March. 2024. Now, these numbers were given that is 45 lakh crore, 27.2 lakh crores, and 17.8 lakh crore. These numbers were given by finance minister on 1st February 2023. So, you know that ki that is a budget day, okay, or you can say budget is presented in the parliament. So, so on 1st Feb, finance minister used to give estimate numbers for this. So, this comes out to be your total borrowing for this financial year is 17.8 lakh crores. 
no so you can say this number is 5.9% of gdp 5.9% of gdp so this is the amount of borrowing that we are going to take in this financial year so that is why i mentioned that fd is total borrowing needed for upcoming financial year so why upcoming because it is presented on 1st feb that is for upcoming financial year that is for this time period so this is why i have mentioned here now the concern here is that how to reduce it further so this is the major concern now if you see that government has taken so many initiatives to reduce it so we'll see them one by one so first of all we'll see the expenditure part so we'll see the expenditure side now in expenditure side so as i told you that we have 45 lakh crore as a total expenditure so out of that you will see that around 35 lakh crores is spent on revenue expenditure whereas 10 lakh crores is a part of capital expenditure so this is what you have to remember this is what you have to remember 45 lakh crore is revenue expenditure 10 lakh crore is a part of capital expenditure now when we are talking about this thing 45 that is 35 so ultimately our focus is that to reduce it now to reduce revenue expenditure government has taken so many measures in last you can say 10 years now for example number one is we have rationalized our subsidies so you can say rationalization of subsidies we have rationalized our subsidies so best example for this for example because in exam you have to give examples also because without examples your answer is incomplete so for example pehel scheme for example pehel scheme so when we talk about pehel scheme it means before 2014-15 citizens enjoy subsidy on unlimited number of cylinders but after 2014-15 government introduced the scheme pehel scheme where you enjoy subsidy on limited cylinders means seven or eight cylinders if you purchase more than that in a financial year then government will not give you subsidy so this is the best example that you have to remember number two government has also taken austerity measures Now, what is austerity measures? Now, austerity measures is related to administrative expenses. Okay. Now, earlier, government, whenever there is any official meeting that used to be conducted at some expensive places, but now government has given a mandate that it should be conduct it should be conducted in government premises only. So it means cost get reduced similarly similarly you have seen that sometimes some people with yellow number plate caps so on that it is written government of india now why it has been written there because government has now outsourced cab service or you can say car service to these cab companies basically what i say that tomorrow if you get selected as irs or any other service so initially when you get the post of assistant commissioner so you will get a car from the government but it is not you can say government car but government has outsourced the car to the private company so private company on behalf of government will provide you services okay so government used to give them on monthly basis so now how this benefit government because initially what or earlier what government was doing 
whenever any officer gets selected, so they have to purchase car. Along with the car, they have to, you can say, employ or hire a driver. Now, along with that, they have to go for insurance of the car. Now, along with that, they also have to go with, you can say, maintenance of the car. So, this is, you can say, expenditure of the government. Now, government gives this contract to a, you can say, cab service company. Now, this cab service company has the responsibility to hire driver. So, it means government does not pay for that. So, government used to pay the services, whatever they have taken. So, for that only they used to pay. So, ultimately it served the purpose of providing car to the officer also as well as government expenditure also get reduced. So, this is, these such steps are called austerity measures. Okay. So, this is what you have to remember. Third, government has also rationalized the schemes. Rationalize the government schemes. Now, when we are saying government has rationalized the government schemes or rationalization of government schemes, so you know that there are some schemes which you can say are overlapping in nature. For example, the same scheme is run by central government, the same scheme is run by the state government also. So, it led to overlapping or duplication of the scheme. So, government decided that either you run the scheme or either we will run the scheme. So, this is called rationalization of scheme. So, you know that on the recommendation of finance commission, they increase the share of state government also. So, the increased share. So, government, central government gives the increased share and said that now it is your responsibility to run the schemes. So, we want to avoid overlapping. So, this is called rationalization of government schemes. Next, if you see. Government has also emphasized on privatization of space and defense. So, when I am talking about privatization, it means I am talking about that we allow private companies, which were earlier restricted for them, private companies to manufacture in space sector and defense sector. Now, ultimately, if suppose, now right now, ISRO is developing rockets also. ISRO is doing research and development also. Now, all these activities which are done by ISRO require money. Now, if suppose, like if I talk about a very famous company that is known as SpaceX. Now, SpaceX has developed a rocket which can launch satellites at very less cost. Now, if the same company is there or you can say private sector is doing in India also. So, ISRO will have less burden with respect to development of rocket. So, ultimately some private company is doing and once they did it, government is or ISRO is using their service to launch the satellites. Now, this what, what will happen that government expenditure on making rocket will reduce. And you can say that burden is now passed to private sector. So, private sector is also earning and government also benefited. So, it means that government will focus more on research and development. So, this is the benefit of privatization here. Okay. Although it has drawback also, but here we are seeing with respect to only how it helped to reduce expenditure. So, we are seeing those initiatives only. Clear? So, when we will talk about privatization of space and defense in a separate topic, there we will discuss about both pros and cons. Clear? Next, if you see that government has accepted the recommendation of N.K. Singh N.K. Singh committee which emphasized that government must reduce its previous debt. Okay, so you know that our debt to GDP ratio was around 68% of GDP. Okay. So, our debt to GDP ratio is 68 percent. So, they want that it should be reduced. So, when I am saying 68 percent, it is for general, general government. So, general government means both center and state. So, ultimately debt that is for both center as well as state was around 68 percent of GDP. So, 
this is what you have to remember. Clear? So, here government has emphasized on this also. Clear? So, we have taken multiple steps in order to reduce our expenditure. Also, if you see that government, so I will just change the slide. So, if you see that government has also introduced the concept of direct benefit transfer. DBT. Now, DBT has reduced the government cost with respect to transfer of benefits to the beneficiaries. Okay. So, DBT has also helped the government to reduce its, you can say, expenditure. So, you can say all these are some of the steps taken by the government and we can say that government has followed the path of fiscal consolidation and fiscal prudence. Okay. And together it is known as fiscal discipline. Now, if we see the expenditure receipt side, if you see the receipt sites, so in receipt sites, you will see that government has also taken measures like the government tried to increase the tax base, for example, by introducing demonetization, number one. So, demonetization helps government to catch black money. So, again, black money, once they cash the black money, so it means government has more tax collection once they identify the black money. Number two, government has also emphasized on formalization of economy. So, when I am saying formalization of economy, so we can say that moving towards moving towards cashless economy, moving towards cashless economy. Number three, that we have also introduced or bring tax reforms like in the form of introduction of GST. So, that is one of the major tax reform, okay, GST. Also, also we are looking for direct tax reforms also in the form of direct tax code. Okay, so we are looking for that also. Number four, if you see that we have introduced new types of tax also. For example, for example, we have introduced, you can say, tax on cryptocurrency. So, earlier there was no tax on cryptocurrency, but we have introduced it. So, you can say it is a part of increase in tax base also. Okay, new types of tax. So, that is cryptocurrency, A point. B point, we have introduced windfall tax, windfall tax, so what is windfall tax, okay, what is tax on cryptocurrency, that we are going to talk about in taxation chapter, so you just refer this series, definitely it is going to help or improve your concepts, don't worry about it. N next. If you see, apart from this, we have introduced another tax that is known as Google tax, which is also called as equalization levy. You can search on Google about these taxes, equalization levy. So, but when we'll do, we'll do, when we'll talk about taxation chapter, so there we'll talk about in detail. So, this is, you can say some of the measures that has been taken by the government with respect to taxation part. Clear? 
Now, apart from this, on receipt sites, we have done other things also, like when it comes to non tax revenue receipt, we have introduced one major scheme that is known as national monetization pipeline where government of india is giving you can say public property on lease so that is you can say lease is a technical term for rent okay so you can say national monetization pipeline so you know that in non tax revenue there is one component that is fees and fines so once you provide such property on lease you will get money okay you will get money that is through under this national monetization pipeline so you can say government will get money in the form of rent so that you can say is a form of or type of fees okay number one apart from this when it comes to capital receipt when it comes to capital receipt government has introduced the concept of strategic disinvestment so government has introduced the concept of strategic disinvestment so this is what you have to remember clear so i hope you understood that if question comes so you have to tell that some steps has been taken on expenditure part and some steps has been taken on receipt part and expenditure part helps to reduce your expenditure whereas receipt part helps to increase your you can say ex receipt part so ultimately the gap between expenditure and receipt will get reduced so you know that ki india is having deficit that is more expenditure than as compared to receipt so we have only one solution that first of all we have to reduce this gap between expenditure and receipt so for that government has taken so many measures so if you are continuously reading newspaper so reading newspaper is very relevant so you will find more such steps and you have to add those points in this list so in future if you see that government is taking some steps in order to decrease its expenditure as well as increase its receipts part so you have to add those things here okay now no doubt some of you don't does not know what is strategic disinvestment so i want that you should comment in comment section although when i'll take a separate topic of taxation and strategic disinvestment so there i'll discuss it so it's a request that whatever topic we are or whatever concept i am trying to make you understand you focus on that only clear you focus on that only so in this video my purpose is to tell you that how to how to reduce fiscal deficit or you can say what steps has been taken by the government to reduce fiscal deficit so you can say if question comes that what steps or initiatives taken by government of india to reduce fiscal deficit or you can say gap between receipts and expenditure so you have to start this question either either if you know the data of fiscal deficit number one or if you know that what is my estimated expenditure and receipts so if you know that thing you can start with that also or if you know both so you can utilize both the concepts okay or both the information so as you know that ki during covid that is in 2021 immediately after covid our fiscal deficit has touched to 9 percent of gdp and by 31st march 
2023 we have bring this number to 6.4 percent of gdp and our next year target is that is as i already told you in the beginning that is by 31st march 2024 our target is to bring it to 5.9 percent of gdp clear now this is what you have to tell to the examiner clear so you can start with this also so ultimately you have to tell that this fiscal deficit is a part of twin deficit and there is a need to reduce it okay now in in you can say ex estimated expenditure and receipt you have to tell to the examiner that my estimated expenditure for this financial year see whenever you write your mains you have to remember for that year okay so i am telling you or so i am covering this video in this month that is in 2023 okay or you can say september 2023 i am covering it so that is why i am using the data of this financial year okay so for financial year 23-24 expenditure is 45 lakh crore so you have to tell that out of 45 lakh crore 35 lakh crore is for revenue expenditure and rest 10 lakh crore is for capital expenditure and for receipts you have to tell that when i am using the word receipt i am talking about revenue receipt plus non-debt creating capital receipt so you have to tell that it is around 27.2 lakh crores so ultimately my total borrowing is so total borrowing means that is your fd that is needed is difference between these two so it comes out to be 17.8 lakh crore so this is what you have to tell to the examiner okay so you can start with this also okay you can start with this also or you can use both so like you can start with this in the end you can use this in conclusion part and in between and in between whatever i have told you that steps that has been taken that you have to write so these are the steps that government has taken in last 10 years so this is what you have to remember clear so this is about you can say fiscal deficit or how to reduce fiscal deficit so if you have understood this thing so you will tell me in comment section that what is the impact of fiscal deficit or high fiscal deficit on indian economy which we are going to understand in our next video so i hope this session is helpful for you and you are learning something so and you have added some part or some knowledge in your you can say that has put in your brain so we'll meet soon till then jai hind and have a nice day